In this video, I'm going to show you how to use animation events in Unity. So we're just going to use the same scene from the last couple of videos where I was demonstrating making billboards and using overlap spheres. You can find links to the videos below if you want to check them out, but you don't need to for this one. You can use animation events to run a specific method in code on any script that's attached to the object that they're on. So some great examples of this would be uh, things like a fighting game. So when you punch or hit an enemy with a weapon, you don't want the, the code to run instantly when you start the animation. You want to wait till the specific frame where you hit the target. So where your punch is at full length and you hit the target, that's when you would want to tell it to do the attack and cause damage to the enemy. We're going to use this scene as an example, and I'm going to set an animation event on the player so that the particles display right when he does his attack. That way we can change the speed of the animation for his attack and the particles will still display at the right time. Okay, let's jump right into the code and see what's going on here. So it's very basic. When you press the attack, it's going to set a trigger on the animator to play the attack animation. Tell the player he's immobilized so you can't move until the attack's done. And then it starts the coroutine attack sequence. And in here, I just put a quarter second delay before it displays those particles. If we go back into the game and then go to the animator window and take a look at this attack animation, you'll notice I have it set to a speed of 1.25. That's just what looked comfortable for the game. But if I change that to 0.25 and I run the game now, those particles are no longer going to display properly because I just put a delay of 0.25 seconds. And now you can see with the animation this slow, they just display almost right away and then the animation takes forever to finish. If we change this so that it uses an animation event to trigger those particles, they'll always display at the exact point that we want them to. Let's go back into Unity and in the project folder, find the animation you want to put the event on and double click on that. Now it's going to open up in the animation tab here. And something I want to point out here is if you import your animations with a model or from a site like Mixamo, those animation cl clips will be set as read only by default. So when you're on this window, if you see a lot of the information's grayed out and it says read only, you won't be able to add an animation event. But to fix this, all you have to do is go back to the project folder and on the animation, just select it and hit control D to duplicate that. And now that new duplicate will not be read only and you can modify that one. So we can just delete the old one and then rename the new one to be the same name. And then we just have to drag it into the animation clip in the animator here again. So if you select the attack animation, you'll notice it says none. We just have to drag in the new one. And now we have an animation clip that we're able to read and write to. Now let's double click on that animation again to open it. And if you look in the little preview window here, if we hit play, we'll see our animation start playing. And then we can just scrub through it and find the exact spot where we want the, the particles to be triggered. So we're going to want it kind of right when he opens his arms like that. So let's find the exact frame we want. So I think right about here, somewhere around 28. So now we know which frame we want. Let's go back over to the animation timeline here. And notice it's in seconds, not frames. So go to the three dots on the right here, select frames. And now let's find frame 28. So if we click on it here. And then on the left here, you can see this little icon I'm mousing over. It says add event. You can either click on that one. Or if you just go back to the right bar, right beside it and right click, you'll see add animation event. Either of these methods will create the same animation event. Now this is the actual animation event. So if we click on it now, you'll see on the right hand side, it has all this different information for variables and object. What we need to do is select the actual player object. And then in the animation window, you just need to select the animation clip. So we need to select the attack one. And now we see the event. And if we click on it, you'll see this drop down. So this is going to show any public method on any script that's attached to the player object. So if we look at our player game object, you see it has the player controller script here. 
So when we're looking at this animation event here, this will show any public method that's available in that player controller script. And if we had other scripts on the player, they would show up here as well. Let's go back to the player controller. And now this first line in the coroutine where it waits for a quarter of a second, we're not gonna need this now. So let's just delete this because this is all gonna be called from that animation event now. Now I'm gonna make a public method in here and I'm gonna call it attack animation event. And it's a good idea to make sure you have a descriptive name for these so you know exactly what they are because you won't see them called in code. So I like to leave a comment, something like this. I'll just put this methods called from the attack animation when it displaced the particle wave. Just so I know exactly what that is when I'm looking through the code. I'm gonna take this line where we start the coroutine and cut that out of the attack method and I'm gonna paste that into our event now. So what's gonna happen here is when you hit the attack button, it'll play the attack animation, but for the actual particles being spawned, it's not gonna happen until it hits that specific point in the clip where that event is. So as soon as that event is hit, it's gonna call this method in the code and this will do all of our checks for us. Let's go back to Unity now and let's select our player again and then select that attack animation. Click on the event. And now in the list, we see attack animation event. So let's click that. And anytime this part of the clip hits, it's gonna run that method. Now let's run our game and test this out. And remember, we still have this animation clip set to 0.25 speed. So if we play it now, notice that that particle wave does not show up until his arms expand whereas before it would play right away after a quarter of a second. So this is working exactly how it should be. This example of how we use this animation event isn't necessarily the best use case for it. I just figured this, uh, this way would be a lot easier to show and display than making something with a lot of complex animations like a fighting game. But those are some of the best examples I have is something like Street Fighter is a great case where every time you punch or kick the enemy, that's when the event would actually be triggered. So not when you start the punch, but right when you actually hit them. Uh, same with something like, you know, in World of Warcraft or something, when you're swinging your axe, you don't want to do the damage check right when you start swinging. You want it to take away their damage right when you hit them with the weapon. So this is how you would do it. So I hope this video helps a lot. Uh, if it does, please like and subscribe, and I'll keep further updates coming out. And thanks for watching.